We're going to go to Maryland to Matt McDarby. Dana, great to uh, great to have you with us. Hey, um, you were talking about uh, addressing everybody has gaps, right? Yep. Um, in your experience, is it better to try to play to someone's strengths to close a gap, mm. or should we be focused on fixing their weakness or you know solving a solving a weakness? Another great question. I just I just was teaching on this yesterday. There's a lot of talk out there, right, that you hear where it's like, hey, just focus on your strengths and double down on them. But a question I always ask is, hey, if you were to do that, what do you think about your, your weaknesses? They're still there, right? So the way, what I find is the way the mind works best and what brings us ease and brings us more confidence and conviction is when we work on things that we're not great at, knowing they're never going to be as good as our strengths. But if we just leave them untouched and say, hey, forget them, it doesn't matter. We, as high achievers, high performers, high expectation individuals, will still be thinking about those things. And I'll give you an example, you know, again, using a, a Derek Jeter, for example, you know, late in his career, he was still performing well. He was still, you know, anything that was hit to him, he'd, he'd, he'd catch and throw and be fine. Uh, you know, as a hitter, he was fine, but his range left and right was starting to shrink a little bit and the media was crushing him for it, crushing him for it, crushing him for it. So what did we do? We didn't just say, Derek, don't worry about it. Just focus on the balls that are hit to you. Make a good throw. Focus on your hitting. You're fine. We said, no, let's break down your first step. And what we found was instead of going straight to the ball, he would take a slight roundabout step. So it actually got us to look at him more objectively and clean him up. And he felt so much better as an individual that he was working on it. And then he started to tell the media, hey, if this is real what you're seeing and I'm working on it. And everything quieted down. So I've always been a big believer, especially with high expectation, high performance, high achieving individuals. If you leave those weaknesses untouched, you will have this constant pull to them. So why not just put as a part of your day-to-day -day plan or week-to-week -week plan, a time for you to work on those weaknesses? Because if you close the gap on that weakness and you continue to elevate your strengths, collectively as a whole, you elevate. And that's, that, that's what the obsession is. I bet you, you know, here we are, 1236, midday, midweek, and we got an excited group of people that are on here to say, hey, I want to get better today. So these are all high expectation, high achieving, high performance competitors that are on the line. So I think everybody could relate to this. If you were to leave a weakness untouched, how would you feel about that? And, yeah. and every high performer I know is like, no effing way, man. I'm going to get this thing closed and I'm going to get it better. You're great. Okay. Thank you, Dana. That, Thanks, Matt. Uh, Thank you. Wonderful answer. Thanks. Thank yeah. you.